Hey crafty friends, it's Chris from Daily Dose of DIY and today we're going to make this awesome welcome sign. Plus, I have a free SVG cup file you can use to make your very own. Let's get started. Okay, let's do a quick rundown of the supplies we're going to need to do this. First, you're going to need your board. I've got this um, 10 inches wide, 6 feet long, and really a 10 inch wide board is only 9 and a quarter inches wide. Don't know why they do that we'll talk about that more with the stencil um you can buy of course i can't fit the whole six feet on here but you can buy these at any of the top three home supply stores i got this one at lowe's it was less than seven dollars one inches wide so it's a one by ten by six foot long and i already have mine painted if you're going to put this outside, it's a good idea to either one, you want to use exterior paint, or two, if you use regular paint, like I'm using just like a regular chalk paint, C paint brand, then you're going to want to um, coat it with a polyacrylic or some sort of sealer if you're going to put it outside. If you use exterior paint though, you're good to go. So my board's already done and painted. You're also going to need um, stencil vinyl. This is Oracle stencil vinyl. If you do not have that, you can use removable vinyl. Do not use permanent vinyl though. Permanent vinyl will peel up your paint and give you all kinds of trouble. We're gonna need some transfer paper and I just use regular clear contact paper. You're gonna need, of course, your paint and your brushes, your Cricut tools, a tape measure, and you're gonna need the long cut mat, the 24 inch Cricut cut mat. The last thing you're going to need if you want to do this design, I made a free SVG file for you. You can grab it on my website. I will go ahead and link that down below and I'll show you how to get that next. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get the free SVG. The link to this page will be in the description. If you are not already a member of my website, it's free. You get free access to my resource library with um, free SVGs. So you'll just want to fill up your name and email address and click subscribe you'll get the link to the library and the password mailed to you if you're already a member just go ahead and click enter the free library it will prompt you for your password my password's already entered so once you enter your password you'll see this screen and then we're just going to scroll on down their SVGs are listed in alphabetical order so you're going to go down to the welcome vertical stencil and you can see on a Chrome browser it automatically starts the download and once the downloads finished you just have to double click it if you don't have a Chrome browser check your downloads folder it will probably go straight there it is a compressed um, zipped folder so I'm on a Mac. You just have to double click on a Mac to get it opened on a PC. You might need to right click and then um, click extract all to get it opened. But you can see in here we've got um, on my folders the zipped copy. It automatically unzipped it for me on my Mac. So we got our regular copy so we're good to go. If you try to open this on your computer, the, S the SVG file, it's probably going to look like just a bunch of gibberish to you um, simply because you do not have the software that can read them. So don't try to open it, just go directly to Cricut. And then we're going to click on New Project and Upload. And we can come over here and click Upload Image. And then if you click Browse, you'll go to your Downloads folder down to the welcome and then click the file that says .svg and open it. Save the file. Select it again in design space and then insert your images. Now this is sized for, I'm going to reduce it here so we can see it, um, my board which is a 10 inch wide board um, however 10 inch wide boards are really only nine and a quarter inches 
which is kind of weird, but that's what this stencil is sized. It's also for a six foot long board, and I gave six inches space at the top and the bottom. So the stencil spread out is going to be nine and a quarter inches wide by 60 inches long total. The first thing you're going to want to do is ungroup it. Everything is already sized for you and ready to go. You can see right here, nine and a quarter inches long. They are set to go on the 24 inch cut mats. You can see this is 17 inches long. So two letters per stencil. We're going to have to get these put together except for the W because there's an odd number of letters so the W is on its own. Now I need you to find the CO and if you look over here in your layers menu you're going to see for some reason I spent hours trying to do this but the center of the O would not stay attached to the rest. So I'm just going to need you to select your CO stencil. You can see on the layers menu they're both select and then click the attach button for me. That way Cricut will cut it together. I don't understand why Cricut's not reading it should be together. Like I said, I spent hours trying to find that solution. I, I can't find it. So we're just gonna have to attach that one. But then once you click the make it button, after it's attached, you'll see then that the center of the O stays in there where it needs to be. Now we are ready. You can continue. You're going to see this warning that um, you need to use the larger mat. You can just click continue. My machine is not connected yet. I don't think I have my Bluetooth on. So it's asking me to connect my maker. Um, as you may know, if you have a maker, you're going to select the... Um, stencil material from right here in design space. If you have a Cricut Explore, go ahead and turn your dial to vinyl and I'm going to show you how to get that vinyl on your mat and we're going to get it cut. Okay, we're back here. I've got um, my stencil vinyl, vinyl cut. I cut three pieces um, 17 inches long, I believe it was. No, 18 inches long. I got my one piece cut nine inches for that W. We're going to go ahead and get it on our long cut mat and get our Cricut cutting. To remove the film here, this mat. This mat is getting pretty rough. <laughs> Hopefully it sticks. Need to get me some new long cut mats. So I just line it up into the corner here, smooth it down straight. Use your tools if you need to. Feed the mat into your machine. Make sure you get it under those little tabs down there. Hit the load button. Looks like it's coming up there. We might need to tape this down. And then hit go. So it is not wanting to stick right here on this top corner piece in a pinch you can just go ahead and tape it down um, scotch tape or masking tape that will hold it though so we can go ahead and get it cut and finish this project And of course, um, you want to always make sure you remove your mat from your project. Of course, when your mat has lost its stick like that, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that helps keep it from curling up and getting damaged. I've been weeding as it's been cutting, so I just wanted to show you real quick. My tape stuck to it. This 
um, the stencil is the exact width of our board. So that's going to help us line it up. And then when you're weeding stencils, you pull out the letters and you leave the background. Um, so with our O, you want to make sure you leave that center of the O in there. You pull out the outer. This is um, the white you see. That's what we're going to paint. So next we need to transfer. I'm going to go ahead and get my transfer paper cut and then I'll show you how to do that. transfer paper cut. I ended up running out. I had to run to the store really quick. But I'm going to get it on our stencil now. I'll show you an easy way how I do that. And then we'll be ready to transfer it to our wood project. So we just want to unpeel one edge of the paper and then I've Fold the backing down. And then if you can line it up to the top and just stick your top part down, that's a little easy piece to manage, right? And then as you're pulling the backing off, I'm just scooting my hand down. You can use your scraper too. at the same time. So it goes down without any bubbles. And then you can go out to your edges. So it's on there nice and smooth. This is called burnishing, if you haven't heard that term yet, and you just want to do that really with some good pressure to make sure your letters get stuck to the transfer tape paper. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest done real quick. transfer tape on all the stencils got the rest behind me one thing I forgot in um, things you'll need some chalk or a pencil I made the stencil if you're following mine to have a six inch gap at the top and a six inch gap at the bottom that's why you're gonna need chalk or pencil because I want to mark um, where to line it up at the top and then make sure the bottom lines up good but if you use chalk or a pencil then you can just Wipe it off, it won't ruin your final product. So get that six inches marked. As you can see, this stencil is going to be exactly as wide as our board. And now I'm just going to line up the rest of them. You're not gonna be able to see my whole six feet in this shot, but I am I'm just going to go down and line them up so I might cut this part and make sure we end up with six inches at the bottom. It should be measured to line up perfectly. So it does line up perfectly good. Um, at the bottom I got six inches left over too. So we're going to go ahead and transfer this. I will show you how to get that done. And I like to do it similar as putting on my transfer paper. Just pull down that bottom part, fold the back over. I'm going to make the top of the stencil hit my chalk lines right here. And the edges should go directly to the red edges of the board. So it will help us keep it nice and square. And then same as the transfer paper, slowly pull the backing off. At the same time, you lay the stencil down. And then we'll use our burnishing tool to scrape it down really good. Make sure it sticks to that wood. And 
then just slowly go ahead and pull up the transfer paper and your stencil will stay down. If you have parts that come up, you can pull off your transfer paper slower or you might need to go back and re-burnish some sections. Okay, we'll get the next section started. This should line up, so I'm going to So I'm going to square the top of this up with the exact bottom of this and then make sure my edges touch on each side to keep it square. And we're going to go ahead and go all the way down the stencil doing this until there are, all the pieces are on. This piece didn't go on exactly square so we can just, we're going to make sure, kind of where I press it down the center. Make sure that none of the back pieces touch. You can pick it up and realign it if you need to. Once you're happy with it, always start with the center first. Go down and get all the bubbles out and then go out to your edges. Bubbles in the actual transfer paper, if that's showing up on camera, doesn't matter because we're going to peel it off. You just don't want any bubbles in your stencil. And I do have a small overlap where they come together. Okay, we have it all the way down to the end. I do have my six inches at the bottom to um, every piece. I did overlap a little bit for each letter and so now we're ready to paint. I have, I'm using Sea Paint Coconut Cream. There is, if you'd like to seal your stencil, I recommend you use Mod Podge um, Matte. Actually, this is such a big one. I think I'm going to, if your wood is rough, you definitely want to seal it. Mine's feeling kind of smooth. Decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to go ahead and just paint, but that is an option. If you have rough wood, if your stencils bleed a lot, Mod Podge first. One of the tricks to get it to not bleed is to just put on light, light coats. I'll link you up this paint down below too. It's one of my favorite brands to use, but if you just start with a super light coat and don't let paint puddle up and get underneath there, it will work a lot better for you. And this paint, one of the reasons I love it is because it dries so unbelievably fast. It will be definitely dried by the time I get down to the bottom and come back up to the top. So light coats, light, light paint for your first coat at least. Okay, we're back to the top. 
can see a little bit of wet on there. Um, I went ahead and did two coats. The second coat was kind of just to maybe even out some paint strokes because I'm I'm doing a weathered piece so I'm okay with that brown showing through in spots. As a matter of fact, in the middle I kind of forgot that and it's going to look more solid. But now it's time to pull off the stencil and see how we did. So when you pull a stencil up, it can pull the base paint off. That's why you don't want to use permanent vinyl. It'll definitely probably pull up your base coat of paint. Stencil vinyl is the best, removable vinyl is the next best. But one of the ways to keep it from peeling up your paint um, is our board, the long board, the grain of the wood goes this way. You're able to see it. It goes like the length of the board. You'd be able to see that if it wasn't painted. So when you pull up a stencil, most people um, pull it up with the grain of the board because that just makes sense to do it that way. But it also is, will pull up more paint that way. If, so if you don't want your paint to pull up, you pull your stencil up against the grain. So the grain's going this way, I'm going to pull my stencil off this way. And then we're just going to go all the way down the line and pull them off. done yet but um my wood board was pretty smooth to start with so I haven't had any bleeds yet the key is a big key to that is to not glop on a lot of painted ones and our last piece And you can grab your um, Cricut tool. If you have any centers, the letters for this one, we just have the O. Pull up that piece. And it's done. So one of the reasons I did the six inches at the top and the bottom is then you can, if you want to embellish it, I think I'm going to do that now I got some fall flowers, some jute twine. Um, I recommend you staple or tie them on. Then this sign doesn't have to be just for fall. I can switch out more Christmassy decorations next month and then springy decorations um, in the spring and it's something that you can use year round. But you do with this stencil, you have that space at the top and the bottom to add extra decorations if you want. All right, so I'm gonna get it decorated, then we're gonna take a look at it outside. And here's our finished sign. I think it looks great at the cabin. Once again, my name is Chris with Daily Dose of DIY. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.